Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this uh, 13th day of December 2021's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm David Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up uh, first, we've got on Hazardous Weather Graphics, we've got a, well, starting out there, St. Lawrence Island and the uh, Bering Strait Coast. Wind chill advisory is out for the night tonight, there remains out, and uh, wind chills to 45 degrees below zero and that should be over with, uh, at least for part of the day tomorrow. And then over to the east, a little uh, strip of red there south of the Fairbanks area, that's a wind chill warning, which is out for tonight for Deltana and the Tanana Flats, uh, which includes Fort Greeley, Delta Junction, Dot Lake, and those areas. And that's for wind chills to 55 degrees below zero, where there's 15 miles an hour of wind or more. And then over, let's see, let's uh, advance one more here and get a little farther to the south. Red area there, Bristol Bay, coastal areas. Is, there's a blizzard warning for the Bristol Bay, mainly along the coast of Bristol Bay. Six to 12 inches of snow uh, may fall in some areas and winds gusting to 35 miles an hour. Now create visibilities uh, to a quarter mile or less at times or whiteout conditions. That may, that's mainly along the coast. Heaviest snowfall expected to fall down toward uh, Port Hyden area. And then the last spot, uh, way far north there, in the, or up at the northern part of the southeast coast, Klondike Highway toward White Pass, wind chill advisory out for tonight. Uh, wind chills continue 35 degrees below zero in that area for at least uh, through the night tonight. And moving on to the uh, 18,000 foot wind flow chart today showing cold upper low pressure, one off the Arctic coast there in the Arctic and the other one over the uh, Southeast interior. And that's pulling cold air down, high pressure over the Russian Far East. You can see that's been pulling cold air down out of the Arctic, right down into interior Alaska, all the way into the Northeast Pacific. But back to the West, there's warmer air, West Southwest flow there. And that whole pattern is going to be shifting eastward. Actually, we have one system coming through that ridge, weakening as it goes, uh, really uh, starting to fall apart now, especially in the northern portion of it. And then the next system back to the west there, that'll be really flattening the ridge out later in the week. And we'll see in three days on Thursday, southwest flow, that ridge shifts eastward, flattens out, and moves uh, warmer air in. You can see the origin now near or just south of Japan coming into central and southern Alaska. In fact, southwest flow or west-southwest flows that ridge axis shifts eastward across all the states. So much warmer temperatures and a better chance of uh, clouds and snow over a much wider area. Moving on to satellite imagery today, we've got uh, moisture increasing as this uh, uh, system comes eastward there. Had snow going on much of the day at Cordova, increasing snowfall and clouds across the Kenai Peninsula, southern Kenai Peninsula, into Prince William Sound, Kodiak Island, and snow moving into the Bristol Bay area and portions of the southwest part of the state there. Front to the north really weakening as it uh, moves on. You can see the first, look, looking pretty formidable here in the first frame. And then as that rolls along, it really starts to uh, kind of break up, especially as it stalls out over the northern Bering Sea. Last couple of frames actually showing that cloud mass starting to shift southward there, just south of St. Lawrence Island. And then back to the west, you can see the development of the next system. That's going to be the second round. That'll finally push the warmer air and change the pattern across all of, it, of Alaska again by about, uh, well, starting late, or starting Wednesday and getting into the interior again on Thursday. And one more round of that. You can see it cleared out pretty good over the southeast coast, that low pressure area dropping south of the, of the panhandle, taking all the moisture with it. So a dry day, cold temperatures, uh, gusty wind still gusting up towards 60 miles an hour, Lynn Canal, much lighter down to the south with uh, temperatures warmer also down. They're just cracking the freeze point this afternoon with lower 30s, I believe at Sitka and down at Annette. 
otherwise below freezing everywhere else in the pan and below zero just about all of interior Alaska into the afternoon some areas reaching zero warming going on over the southwest with the increased cloud cover today you can see the uh, moisture on the increase there that frontal boundary pushing eastward low center just south of the Alaska Peninsula and then that front uh, weakening but uh, pretty good gradient there with the uh, keeping a little breezy St. Lawrence Island and warmer temperatures pushing into the Pribilofs showers temperatures in the uh, 40s today over the Fox Islands and rising above freezing at Cold Bay with the precipitation ending any, anywhere from two to four inches of snow fell along the Alaska Peninsula in advance of that system today and that whole area of moisture and clouds will continue to increase across southern Alaska tonight winds gusting 56 miles an hour out of the north at Eldred Rock and uh, Five Finger Lighthouse farther south about 40 miles an hour and then lighter winds down to the south there otherwise we've had uh, Potato Point, Prince William Sound, northeast gusting 53 miles an hour. But winds coming down uh, Resurrection Bay in the Seward area and starting to diminish elsewhere with, uh, let's see, uh, Nelson Lagoon seeing gusts to about uh, 46 miles an hour there with that system ahead of that front. And moving on to tonight, you'll see areas of snow come across south central Alaska, Cook Inlet, Manuscus to Sitna Valley, and uh, clouds and that's going to make for a much warmer night or morning Tuesday morning than what we had Monday morning with temperatures down approaching 30 below in the Susitna Valley this morning I believe 27 below at Willow and around 20 below in East Anchorage this morning that's going to be much milder than uh, or tomorrow morning than this morning and snow moves into the Copper River Basin northeast interior next system uh, moving eastward and that'll spread rain and wind into the Pervilof Island, start to increase the wind and snow and blowing snow. St. Lawrence Island late tomorrow afternoon with snow moving back onto the southwest coast. Clears out, that system shifts off to the east, the moisture with it, eastern Copper River Basin, north Gulf Coast. Dry for the panhandle, increasing clouds, uh, possibly there depending on how much uh, strength that system down to the south has. But uh, up to the north, light snow flurries from the Yukon Flats up to the eastern Arctic coast and uh, mostly dry again clearing out and temperatures falling below zero again for uh, Tuesday night and early Wednesday across southern Alaska and then the warming comes in hits the coast with snow and blowing snow Wednesday and Wednesday afternoon rain and snow for the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians as that front kind of uh, hangs up there along the Aleutian chain rain and snow showers for the Pribilofs and the Bering Sea Snow and blowing snow on the increase, uh, northern Bering Sea, southern St. Lawrence Island, or all of St. Lawrence Island into the Bering Strait. Now pushing inland could push snow all the way into western Cook Inlet by late Wednesday afternoon or Wednesday evening. Otherwise, clear and cold, eastern and northern interior to the Arctic coast. Few snow showers for the Panhandle. Lows tonight, uh, 30 below for the Copper River Basin and the northern Cuscombe Valley, anywhere from uh, 0 to 10 below. The coldest temperatures, Bristol Bay occurring uh, now, same thing for South Central Alaska, temperatures on the upswing. Three below for uh, Skagway, maybe Haines, northern Panhandle, mid-teens down to the south. And highs tomorrow, mid-teens for the northern southeast coast to uh, 25 to 30 elsewhere. And uh, above zero, South Central Alaska, 17 though for Homer, 29 Kodiak, below zero for Bristol Bay. Back below zero again for uh, South Central Alaska, Susitna Valley, Kenai Peninsula, Copper River Basin, 30 below northern Cuscombe Valley and in the teens and 20s for the Panhandle. Highs follow, followed by highs 20s to uh, lower 30s for the southeast coast. Single numbers or below zero for southern Alaska, near 32 for Kodiak Island. Up north there, interior temperatures, lows tonight 30 to 40 below. And highs tomorrow 20 to 30 below, but warmer, almost cracking zero there around St. Lawrence Island, followed by lows. Uh, not much colder, a little below zero St. Lawrence Island, 30, 40 below again over the uh, interior, warmer out to the west, more like 15 to 25 below, followed by highs uh, cracking zero for Nome, 13 St. Lawrence Island, but in the 20 to 30 below range for the eastern interior and north slope. Out to the southwest, staying above freezing for the Pribilofs, upper 30s to lower 40s for the Aleutians for your lows, followed by highs in the mid 40s, and then lows the following morning, all above freezing in the Aleutian chain, shade below freezing for St. Uh, Paul, lower 30s, mid the upper 30s for the Fox Islands, followed by highs in the lower 40s for Unalaska and Nikulski, upper 30s for the Alaska Peninsula and Pribilofs. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
Blind weather. IFR, Eastern Bulford Sea Coast. Marginal VFR, Eastern North Slope down to the Brooks Range. And uh, VFR, much of interior Alaska, but marginal VFR spreading northward across the Eastern Alaska Range into the uh, upper Tanaw Valley, 40 mile country to about Eagle. And IFR in across the Copper River Basin, North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound, even a band of IFR now showing up over the central Kenai Peninsula, possibly as far north as Turnigan Arm. Marginal VFR, Cook Inlet and the Kinnick uh, Arm area on down across Kodiak Island, Alaska Peninsula. IFR there, narrow band, central Aleutians, expands as you head up towards uh, St. Matthew Island and just uh, clipping the Pribilofs. And for the afternoon, <clears throat> Panhandle uh, VF, VFR for t uh, the day, the entire day, the southeast coast will be VFR, marginal VFR, north Gulf Coast, and uh, northward all the way to the eastern Arctic coast with some areas of IFR thrown in there. But much of uh, the central and western part of the state will stay VFR, Kodiak Island included, Bristol Bay, and the Alaska Peninsula, Northern Bering Sea, St. Lawrence Island, uh, Seward Peninsula, Bering Strait, all VFR, IFR St. Matthew Island down to about St. Paul, and improving over the Aleutians, areas of VFR breaking out, especially West Central Aleutians and around Nikolsky. And for the uh, morning on Wednesday, uh, marginal VFR with the next push of moisture coming, making landfall along the coast uh, by Wednesday morning. IFR into Nunavak Island, St. Matthew Island, up to Gamble, and the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula, otherwise marginal VFR, Fox Islands, VFR mostly for the central Aleutians, and the interior looking really good, North Gulf Coast, Kodiak Island, the Arctic Coast, just a narrow band of some lingering marginal VFR over toward the eastern border that extends down to about uh, Yakutat, uh, southeast coast stays VFR, and for the afternoon that area is gone now. Uh, VFR Panhandle, North Gulf Coast, much of interior Alaska. Marginal VFR creeping eastward and northward with IFR from St. Lawrence Island down along the southwest coast and still the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula. Uh, Central Northern Bering Sea, uh, marginal VFR, but uh, some pretty widespread VFR there for the Fox Islands westward to uh, Amchitka Island, then back into marginal VFR to Shimianat too. And for passes, Anatuvik, uh, VFR, and that again, go marginal VFR. Lake Clark and Merrill, another VFR day coming up with rainy looking pretty good. VFR for win windy as well. Isabel, go marginal VFR. And uh, Mentasta, marginal VFR. And in between those two passes could be a zone of IFR flying conditions there for the Eastern Alaska Range. But I think the passes will be marginal. And for Tanita, marginal VFR to start, uh, improving to VFR probably before noontime. And Portage, IFR to VFR, just uh, upward trend conditions, uh, possible IFR to start, and then VFR probably by late morning or into the afternoon through evening. Chilkoot and White, good VFR. Freezing levels at the surface there near the Pribilofs uh, across the southern Bering Sea, cutting across southern Bristol Bay, Kodiak Island, south of the Panhandle. And uh, Warmer air creeping northward there, two to 6,000 feet over the central Bering Sea down to the central Aleutians. And looking at icing, areas of uh, light rime or mixed icing, very isolated, moderate, probably nothing at all. North Gulf Coast would be the best chance of anything moderate. Otherwise, just a slight threat there for the eastern interior up to the eastern Arctic coast. A little bit heavier band of icing now is coming into the northern Bering Sea, northwest Bering, extending down across the Pribilofs and to the central Aleutians, extending westward. Jet stream ridging uh, coming in toward the west coast. Uh, again, northwest, north-northwest flow, 115 knots, drops off to about, say, 90 knots across Kodiak Island. Cold upper low now off the south coast of the Panhandle. Another one over the eastern Arctic coast, next system out west. So we've got southwest flow that's advancing eastward up to 120 knots over the Bering Sea. 9,000 feet, that system, 75 knots southwest winds there with the kind of a sharper ridge at this elevation right along and off the west coast there. North, northwest, 55 knots southwest of Kodiak. 3,000 feet, 70 knot winds southwest of St. Lawrence Island. Taking a look at the turbulence chart, mechanical turbulence, uh, considerable moderate, especially for small aircraft, North Gulf Coast and Southeast Interior as well as St. Lawrence Island to the Pribilofs and much of the Aleutians.
Hello again, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And joining us again, talking about the augmented reality sandbox, is Eric Stevens from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska. And he's actually talking about a project from EPSCOR, which is the Experimental Program to Stimulate Competitive Research. A lot of acronyms, but some really mm -hmm. fun stuff today, right, Eric? You bet. We've got a learning tool that is a tool that's fun to use, uh -huh. and it really has a, a relevance to actually daily lives of anyone who goes outside uh -huh. and sees uh, lumpy topography in Alaska. We've got yes. a lot of mountains and such. You know, when I was younger and go on your first hike in the hills, say, yeah. you're given, maybe you're in the Boy Scouts, or, or you get at the kiosk at, a, at the trailhead, a topographic map, a flat piece of paper yes. with all these lines on it, bullseyes, uh, long lines that curve back mm -hmm. on themselves, say, perhaps things that look like this. Mm -hmm. Um, a, a quadrangle or a topographic map. We've got here just to illustrate a couple of examples near Denali. Alaska okay. has so much Perfect topography, example. so many mountains. Yeah. And what are all these lines that we see? It can be tough mm -hmm. to know what this means the oh, first yeah. time you look at it. What we've got, all these lines represent lines of where the, uh, the elevation of the topography goes through a certain level above sea level, say. Mm -hmm. that This line represents where the mountains have gone from below 1,000 feet mean sea level up through a thousand feet and above. That's your thousand foot contour. And when the mountain keeps going up, mm -hmm. you're up to 1,200 feet, 1,400 feet, and so on. And that's how you get this little bullseye around, uh, around the peak of a mountain. Kind of makes layered slices, right? Kind of like layered slices. Okay. Nice way yeah. to look yeah. at that. And when you see those, the lines are closer together, you're, you're going up more steeply. Okay. If the mountain rises more slowly, it takes you longer in horizontal space to go through those different vertical increments. So that is that, really hard to visualize. Right. We're, imagine you're looking at a 2D piece of paper, two-dimensional yeah. piece of paper, but you're trying to understand what the three-dimensional world looks yeah. like. Yeah. Well, enter you know, the augmented help. reality I like it. sandbox. Okay. Yes, what is that? Yeah. It is right here. We have the sandbox with us today, Sandbox 2.0, portable version, Sweet. built up at University of Alaska Fairbanks. And we've got a couple of folks helping out today. Yeah, uh, let's see, Alana Velaji, and she's a uh, mechanical engineering student from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. If you want to give us a thumbs up there, Alana, thanks for helping us out today. And Courtney Brees, she's the outreach coordinator from EPSCOR, also helping us out today. Thanks, Courtney. And this tool here has a Microsoft Connect um, to sense the level of sand in this sandbox, oh, wow. and then the yeah. Connect feeds its information into a computer that then sends a signal to a projector okay. to draw the appropriate topographic lines on this topography. The fun thing about this, as we can see here, wow, that. is that the sandbox and its Connect and its projector, they all work as a team. Hmm. So here we've got a mountain in the middle of the, of the uh, sandbox. What if we uh, took down the mountain to some degree Watch as the, uh, the software responds and redraws the topography. Mm, kind of a caldera forming there. There you go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what's fun about the sandbox, too, is it knows that uh, gravity flows downhill. Okay. And we've got some water that's actually down in the lowest elevations. And what's happening now is we're making it rain a little bit. We'll fill up rain oh, wow. into that uh, elevated lake bed, that caldera, as you uh -huh. said. And so now water is pooled up there. And if, what if you gouged out an outlet uh -oh. channel? Glacial dam release. There you go. The water flows out. What we're seeing here is a tool mm. that allows people to touch and connect, uh, Microsoft Connect, right. RRR, yeah. um, to connect two-dimensional topographic maps like what we have here, these flat things on a piece, wow. on a piece of paper, to the real three-dimensional world. I mm -hmm. think this sandbox, it's sandbox's real particular application as a learning tool to young people is what does a two-dimensional map mean when it's trying to represent the three-dimensional world? Right. This sandbox is kind of both at once. It's actually three-dimensional, uh -huh. a lumpy topography there, the sand, but it's got these lines drawn on the three-dimensional sand that would be on a two-dimensional right. piece right. of paper. Wow, that, I mean, that, that is a huge leap from the learning that we experienced when we were younger to how, mm -hmm. how children and even adults are visualizing in, in these new forms of technology it allows that to kind of reshape their thinking and visualize this in a, in a very useful and absolutely hands-on way. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's a hands-on tool. And it's hard for me to sit here and not go play with that. <laughs> well, that's what happened at GINA, um, up at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, when the first model was being made, the prototype with right. plywood and such, we had professional adult 
<laughs> professor types had heard about this and they yeah. came by because they wanted to see how it worked. Okay. And, and everyone becomes uh, that idealistic, wonder-filled youngster. Sure. And, and you, you just can't help but play with that and to see how it reacts in time and, and um, right. it, it's a dynamic learning tool. And it Dynamic. responds. That's exactly. That's exactly mm -hmm. the word. Yeah. And you know, you wonder okay. what applicabilities beyond a teaching right. tool for Where topography it can it have? You can see how in Alaska we have inundation mapping as an okay. issue. If you had water coastal slosh, mm -hmm. slosh inland, say in a coastal flooding event right. on the western coast of Alaska or mm -hmm. the Arctic coast, you could see this. The concept is illustrated here um, as an introductory learning method. I think this is a potentially good outreach tool for all of us in Alaska. Okay, so not only just a topographical sense, a, a mapping sense, maybe something that leads into understanding of how geographic information systems work with GIS, but mm -hmm. also geology, if we wanted to get into kind of the formations and the bigger land masses and, and the representation of the 2D map, uh, we could go into hydrology, uh, which is uh, very important in Alaska, of course. Um, and even just understanding the weather sense, mounding up a big pile of sand could be that Arctic high pressure system sitting on top of Fairbanks and the voids mm -hmm. would be low pressure systems. This can go a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. Yes, wow. exactly. It's uh, not just landforms, but pressure has contours of high pressure and low pressure. And I wish I had had this kind of a learning tool no when I was taking kidding. Meteorology 101 back 25 years oh, ago. Wow. It would have been helpful, I think. Probably would have gotten a better grade. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for coming by, Eric and Alana and Courtney. Thank you so much for your help there in the sandbox. We are going to play in the sandbox a little bit more coming up tomorrow on our next edition of Alaska Weather Facts. We hope you join us for that. In the meantime, make sure you go to alaska.edu slash E-P-S-C-O-R. That's alaska.edu. EPSCOR to learn more information about what we're doing with this augmented reality sandbox around Alaska. We'll see you next time on Alaska Weather Facts. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at the CS analysis here, this is for December 10th, uh, three days ago. And then comparing it to today, you can see it really making a jog to the west and southwest, uh, especially up there around St. Lawrence Island and even the uh, Bristol Bay area and southwest coast here as we go to there. You can see it makes a uh, noticeable advance off to the southwest between those two frames. And that's going to uh, come to a halt here as the wind flow changes out over the Bering Sea and we get into south-southwest flow late Tuesday and Wednesday, so that will probably, that'll definitely halt the advance and turn things around, maybe even uh, push it back some. Moving on to the coastal water forecasts. South coast of the Panhandle tomorrow, east southeast winds 20 to 25 knots, seas at seven feet. North coast, southeast to east winds at 25 knots. Gale warnings, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, northern inner channels, north winds 35 knots, northeast to 20 for Stevens Passage and north 15 for Clarence Strait. Outlook for Wednesday, Central Southern Inner Channels, North Winds, 15 knots, seas 3 feet. Small craft advisories for the Northern Inner, inner Channels for northerlies at 25 knots, especially Lynn Canal. And it uh, looks like the Central Coast looking at a northwest breeze at 15 knots and 20 knot northerlies there for the South Coast. Well, the North Coast, light east winds at 10 knots. Prince William Sound, northeast, 15 knots for the day Tuesday, 3 foot seas. Small craft advisories for Southern Cook Inlet, north 25 knots. Small crafts also for Kemshack Bay for north uh, west winds at 30 knots. Gale warnings for the Barren Islands northwest 35 knots. North winds 20 knots for the western north Gulf Coast and around Middleton Island. Small craft advisories east winds 25 knots. Those drop off from the north Gulf Coast uh, on Wednesday. East northeast release at 15 knots. Seas down to 5 to 6 feet. Prince William Sound light northeast wind at 15 knots. And Northern Cook Inlet, northeast to 10, small craft advisories south of the Forelands into Kamishak Bay, northeast winds 25 knots. Barren Islands coming down to 20 knots with the direction shifting to southwest. Kodiak Island, northerlies 25 to 35 knots tomorrow, northeast 15 knots for Bristol Bay. Alaska Peninsula small craft advisories for 25 knot winds. And for Wednesday, Kodiak Island, east side there, southwest at 20, Shelikoff Strait east at 15. Alaska Peninsula, south to southwest winds 25 knots, and for Bristol Bay, southeast winds 25 knots. Gale warnings for Fox Islands tomorrow, south winds increasing to 30 knots, seas running 11 to 16 feet. 
Gales also for Adak and Atka and Amchitka Island, all south 40 knots, seas 13 to 22 feet, southwest 35 knot winds from Kiska to Shimia. For Wednesday, Shimia to Kiska, no change, southwest winds 35 knots for uh, Amchitka, Adak and Atka, as well as all the Fox Islands, so everywhere from Kiska Island eastward. Winds will be southwest at 30 knots with seas ranging from 14 to 23 feet. Up along the southwest coast, gale warnings for the Yukon Delta coast there. East winds 35 knots. Cuscombe Delta coast, small craft advisories, east winds 25. Small craft advisories also for the Perloff, south winds at 30 knots. But east 40 knot winds in the forecast for St. Matthew Island, even stronger for St. Lawrence Island, east 45 knots. And the outlook for Wednesday, Norton Sound and St. Lawrence Island, east winds 35 knots. That's good for gale warnings and small craft advisories for the southwest coast. South winds 30 knots, southwest 25 for the perm loss with 13 foot seas and south of 20. St. Matthew Island, 14 foot seas. Pretty light winds up on the central eastern Arctic coast there with uh, mostly out of the north to northeast 5 to 10 knots. Northeast 15 knots for the uh, western coast and from Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson. Northeast to 20, Cape Thompson to Wales, north at 15. Big increase in the winds on the, uh, well, from uh, Wales to Cape Thompson, east 30 knots. Brisk wind advisories all the way up to Point Lay for east northeasterlies at 25 knots. Otherwise, uh, east at about 10, becoming variable to west at 15 over toward demarcation point. For tonight, high pressure up there, but there is low clouds, fog, and flurries possible anywhere along the Arctic coast, central, eastern, north slope, maybe down toward the Yukon River, possibly. Snow increases with cloud cover, and that means warmer temperatures tonight for southern and southeast Alaska, southeast interior. It stays cold and breezy over the panhandle. Next system pushes uh, warmer temperatures and moisture in across the Bering Sea, southern Bering up to the Pribloffs, increasing snow. Tuesday afternoon along the southwest coast, blowing snow increasing for St. Lawrence Island, and that pushes eastward and northward on Wednesday. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>